treatment of Parkinson, that is part two. In the part one, I had already discussed last time regarding causes and pathophysiology and clinical feature of Parkinsonism. <coughs> so before we talk about treatment, again, a word of how and what the reason of Parkinsonism. Look at me. You know that in Parkinsonism, nigrostriatal pathway is involved. And in this pathway, there are two neurotransmitters. One is acetylcholine and other is dopamine. The basic problem is the level of dopamine goes down. So there is an imbalance between dopamine and acetylcholine. And our main treatment is to maintain it the balance. So we can do by two reasons. Either you in key we give a dopaminergic drug, drug or I give a anticholinergic drug. So in that way, either way we can able to maintain the normal balance. So we so in nutshell, we have to give any drug which can increase dopamine by any way, or we can reduce style choline. Okay, we can give anticholinergic. So before I do discuss the treatment, how we treat a case of Parkinson, let's see what are the drugs that we are available with us. So first of all. In the drugs, we have Mao B inhibitor. This includes salicylene, Reza Gilin. Okay. Now, how do these drugs act? They simply reduce the metabolism of levodopamine uh, dopamine so that they prolong the action of dopamine. So, by and large, they increase the duration of action of dopamine. Okay. Now, one important precaution regarding Mao B inhibitor. Whenever we are giving any patient Mao B inhibitor, patient should be advised not to take cheese. Cheese or paneer should not be given because that contains tyramine and that can precipitate severe hypertension in this patient. Now, second group of drug is centrally acting. acting acetyl anticholinesterase anticholinergic so centrally acting anticholinergic drugs and the example is benztropine Then the third criteria of the drug is dopamine agonist. And they include drug like levodopa and carbidopa also. What is the problem with this drug? It, they are wonderful drugs. The main problem is on off phenomena. That means whenever the level of dopamine is there, the patient becomes all right, but when the level goes down, patient becomes again symptomatic. So on off phenomena is a big problem in these patients. Second drug is amantadine. It is a, is a dopaminergic drug. Third drug is non ergot alkaloid. Ergot 
and this include Premipexol, Ropinirol, Rotigotin, and recently apomorphin has been added. They are all non ergot alkaloids. They all, all they increase to, they all have dopaminergic action. Then the fourth drug is ergot alkaloid. They include pergolide, Cabergolin, Bromocriptine. This is the old drug, but these two are the new drugs. Okay. Then the fourth category of drug is COMT inhibitor. They also increase the duration of action of dopamine just like Mao B inhibitor. And they include, example is Tolcapone, Anticapone, okay. Well, whenever we are using any of the dopaminergic drugs, the, one of the main side effects of any dopaminergic drug is psychosis. So if the patient develops psychosis, then we have certain antipsychotic drugs which we like to use. So antipsychotic drug we can use is quetapine is the most widely used. Quetapine is used or olanzapine is used. Or we can use a risperidone. Okay. So friends, these are the drugs that we have in, in our armament to treat a case of Parkinsonism. Okay. Now let's see how we should treat a case of Parkinsonism. Treatment. Suppose a patient come in the early stage or who has mild disease and he has come in the early stage and he his age is below 60 years. Then the drug of choice is anticholinergic. Anticholinergic like benzodiazepine. But as you know, they have a side effect of constipation, dry mouth. This is a problem with anticholinergic. But if the in mild stage patient has disease age of above 60 years, we prefer to use amantadine. So below 60 years is anticholinergic. Above 60 years is amantadine. But in, remember, it's in mild state, mild disease. But if you 
he has come late, then how to treat this case? Okay, so we can use either of the two. Remember, you now you know the basic fundamentals. These two drugs, either of these two drugs, they are going to increase the duration of action of dopamine. So in a nutshell, suppose we use levodopa, okay, plus we use COMT inhibitor like tolcapone, or we can use mau inhibitor like serigelines. So in nutshell, I give example. So I suppose I'm using levodopa, levodopa plus maybe I give serigelin. This is how I'm going to treat a case of severe disease. But mild disease, either anticholinergic in below 60 years and amantadine in above 60 years. So in nutshell, you can revise in just three words only. Below 60 years, anticholinergic. Above 60 years, amantadine. And in severe disease, levodopa or selegiline is the one example, but there are different combinations you can use. In nutshell, this is how you are going to treat a case of Parkinsonism. But now, certain new things have come up. New things have come up. This is like deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation. This is widely discussed in all the conferences. And those of you who are appearing for exams, this topic will surely come in the exam. I'm leaking the paper to you, but I'm doing it officially. There's nothing illegal about it. Why I can say so authentically? Because it's the most widely topic discussed in all conferences of neurology. Now, what is this? In this in high frequency radiation, are given to brain, especially subthalamic nucleus. Or, or globus pallidus. Okay, deep brain stimulation. Now, one more thing, continuous infusion of levodopa. What is this? As I discussed earlier, that when we use levodopa, which is a wonderful drug, the problem is it can lead to on off phenomena. On of phenomena. When patients taking the drug in the blood, blood levels are high, patient become all right. When drug is metabolized, level goes down, patient again becomes symptomatic. Then this was a big problem. And finally, they have come with a solution of insulin. Way back when we were giving ins insulin,
passed it down. And of course, when you write college, don't forget to write the name of city also. And of course, your email ID. Of if you can send. So they are thing you can send to me. I'll save your number in my WhatsApp. And I uh, and of course, if your WhatsApp number is same as mobile number, is fine. Otherwise, you can, you can even mention your mobile number also. Okay, so you'll be directly in touch with uh, my WhatsApp number. So I'll be too happy to talk to you. Thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye, and I'll be waiting for your message. Please keep on giving feedback how you like it, and so that. And other topics, as I said, you want to see, let me know. Thank you very much.